ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله indeed the best of speech the truest of speech is the book of Allah the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa khayrul hadi hadi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the best guidance is the guidance of our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa sharrul umuri muhdathatuha and the worst of affairs are those things we newly invent into this deen of ours wa kullu muhdathatin bid'ah and everything we newly invent into this religion of ours is an innovation wa kullu bid'atin dalala and every innovation is misguidance and it leads to stray wa kullu dalalatin fi an-nar every going astray every misguidance is in the hellfire thumma amma ba'd my dear brothers and sisters in islam as we conclude on these last few weeks of discussing the heart its importance the importance in rectifying it the importance of warning it the importance of taking care of it we will conclude inshallah today with some more admonition regarding it remembering the hadith that summarizes it all the hadith from an-nu'man ibn bashir radiyallahu anhu where he said that the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam said inna fil jasadi mudgha idha salahat salah al jasad kulluh wa idha fasadat fasad al jasad kulluh ala wa hiya al qalb the hadith that we constantly remind one another with where the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said indeed in the body is a piece of flesh it may be a small comparison to the rest of the body in terms of percentage but there's a small piece of flesh in the body if it is sound the rest of you will be sound but if it is corrupt the rest of you will be corrupt and he said indeed this piece of flesh is the heart abdullah ibn amr radiyallahu anhu he said that it was said to the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam ayyun nas afdal which of the people are best faqala rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam kullu muhmum muhmum al qalb صدوق اللسان قالوا صدوق اللسان نعرفه فما مخموم القلب قال هو التقي التقي النقي لا اثم فيه ولا بغي ولا غل ولا حسد رواه ابن ماجه وهذا حديث صحيح the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم when he was asked which of the people are best he said it is the one who has a pure heart and is sincere in speech they said we understand sincerity in speech but what is a pure heart He said sallallahu alaihi wasallam it is the heart that is pious the heart that is pure the heart that does not sin the heart that is not unjust or that that has no injustice the heart that has no rancor or envy in it feeling for what grieving for or yearning for what the other people have afwan qala al hasan al basri rahimahullah fasad al qulub mutawallid min sittati ashya awwalaha yudnibun bi raja al tawba ويتعلم ويتعلمون يتعلمون العلم ولا يعلمون وما يعملون به عفوا واذا عملوا لا يخلصون وياكلون وياكلون رزق الله ولا يشكرون ولا يرضون بقسمه الله ويدفنون الموت موتاهم ولا يعتبرون الحسن البصري رحمه الله said the heart becomes corrupt through six means and this will be the topic of the rest of the khutbah the heart becomes corrupt in six ways and these are ways we obviously have to do the opposite of so that our hearts do not become corrupted so that we are sound on the day of judgment those six means the one who commits a sin in hope of repenting seeks knowledge without applying it practices it without sincerity 
eats the sustenance of Allah without being grateful to Him, not being pleased with Allah's qadr, destiny that, they, that He has allocated for them, and burying the dead without learning a lesson from them. These six corrupt the heart. And so we will review them point by point, so that inshallah, we know what we can do to يعني, make our hearts firm and strong and pure and clean. But we have to know what we have to stay away from so that we forbid ourselves Ibn Allah Ta'ala from it, getting a corrupt heart. The first one, Yudnibuna bi Tawba. The heart becomes corrupt through committing a sin in hopes of repenting. They may not be able to repent because they're so overwhelmed, overwhelmed by the desires, by their whims. Regarding the sin sometimes as permissible, fooling themselves to think that it's not a sin just so they can persist in it. And you may not be able to do so because death may come before you can repent from it. Allah says, وَنُقَلِّبُ أَفْئِدَتَهُمْ وَأَبُصَارُهُمْ كَمَا لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا بِهِ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةٍ وَنَظَرَهُمْ فِي تُغْيَانِهِمْ يَعْمَهُونَ Allah says what means, and we shall turn their hearts and their eyes away from guidance as they refuse to believe they're in the first time and we will leave them in their trespass to wander bl- uh, blindly. The heart, it can get corrupt just by committing sins and not caring to repent at that time of committing the sin. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said this is part of a greater understanding that a man or a woman, they fear their sins may cause them misfortune at the time of death. And they always want to keep upon good so they have a good end. Because of this, the earlier generations, they feared sinning. They feared sins because they knew that death could come at any stroke at any time, lest it would keep them from a good end. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا تُوبُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ تَوْبَةً نَصُوحًا عَسَى رَبُّكُمْ أَنْ يُكَفِّرْ عَنْكُمْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَيُدْخِلُكُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ يَوْمَ لَا يُخْزِ اللَّهُ النَّبِيَّ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ نُورُهُمْ يَسْعَى بَيْنَ أَيْدِيهِمْ وَبِأَيْمَانِهِمْ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا أَتْمِمْ لَنَا نُورَنَا وَأَغْفِرْ لَنَا إِنَّكَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah says what means, O oh you who believe, turn to Allah with a tawbah, a sincere repentance, asking Allah to forgive you and to guide you. It may be that your Lord will remit you your sins and admit you to a garden where rivers flow beneath, يعني جنة, the day that Allah will not grace, disgrace, Prophet Muhammad Wasallam and those who believe with him. That day, Allah will not disgrace the Messenger Wasallam, nor will He disgrace the believers. Their light will run forward at, before them, and their record of book, uh, their book of good deeds will be in their right hands, and they will say, Our Lord, keep perfect our light for us, and do not put it off until we cross the sirat, the slippery, sharp as a sword bridge over Jahannam. And grant us forgiveness, verily you are able to do all things. So part of what can corrupt the heart is that you sin, you sin and you're not looking for repentance. You keep delaying it as if you don't need to do it now. The second part, where the heart becomes corrupt, وَيَتَعَلَّمُونَ الْعِلْمِ وَلَا يَعْمَلُونَ بِهِ The heart becomes corrupt through seeking knowledge, gaining knowledge, but then not applying it. And there's no goodness in knowledge, that's not confirmed by action. You can be the smartest of people in terms of the deen. You can have all of the knowledge, but if you don't implement it, you're as worthless as a feather flying in the air. The goodness of knowledge, there's no goodness in knowledge which is not confirmed by action, nor in words which are not confirmed by deeds. Allah says, سَبَّحَ لِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْحَكِيمُ Allah says what means whatsoever is in the heavens and the earth, and what uh, glorifies Allah, and He is the Almighty, the All-Wise. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ O you who believe, why do you, what do you, why do you say that which you do not do? Why do you say that which you do not do? كَبْرُ مَقْتًا عِنْدَ اللَّهِ أَن تَقُولُوا مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ Most hateful is it with Allah that you would say something that you do not do. Implementing the ilm, the knowledge that we get is part of this deen. And it's a farida. كَمَا قَالَ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ وَسَلَّمْ طَلَبُ الْعِلْمِ فَرِيدَةٌ عَلَى كُلِّ مُسْلِمْ That the seeking of knowledge is a farida, it's an obligation upon every Muslim. The proper understanding of the deen, this is one of the best characteristics you can have, one of the best actions you can have. 
that Allah may honor you by. Because the Prophet ﷺ, he said, مَنْ يُرْدِ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرِ فَقِّهُمْ فِي الدِّينِ That whoever Allah really wants goodness for, this is an honor that Allah would want goodness for you, then He grants him or her understanding of the religion. And بَرْزَ الْأَسْنَمِ He narrated that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ, he said, لَا تَزُولُ قَدْمَ عَبْدٍ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ حَتَّى يُسَعَلْ عَنْ أُمْرِهِ فِي مَا أَثْنَاهِ وَعَنْ عِلْمِهِ فِي مَا فِي مَا فَعَلْ وَعَنْ مَالِهِ مَنْ أَيْنَ اتَّسَبَهُ وَفِي مَا أَنْفَقُهُ وَعَنْ جِسْمِهِ فِي مَا أَبْلَاهُ This hadith which is Hassan Sahih, the Prophet ﷺ said, the feet of the slave of Adam, the Afwan, the, Afwan, the, the feet of the slave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they will not move on the day of judgment until you're asked about five things. About your life, you will be asked, and then we'll be asked, how did you spend it? You'll be asked about your knowledge, and what did you do with it? What did you do with the knowledge that you were given? Did you just use it to say, this guy has learned it, this guy's a sheikh, this guy's a this, this person knows and understands the deen, or did you actually implement it and teach it so that it would be implemented? You will be asked about your wealth, where you got it from? Was it from halal or haram? Was it from being truthful or was it from cheating? And you will be asked where you spent it. Did you spend it to further your desires? To fulfill your desires? Or did you spend it in the cause of Allah? And then you will be asked about your body and what you did to wear it out. Because age alone doesn't wear out the body. It's the things we do to it along the way that wear it out. You will be asked what made you get worn out. You will be asked, or one of the things that can corrupt the heart is knowledge that you do not act upon. The third one he mentioned in Hassan al-Basri, وَإِذَا عَمِلُوا لَا يُخْلِصُونَ The heart becomes corrupt when you practice or you do deeds without sincerity. And we know as Muslims that for our deeds to be accepted, there are two conditions. You must have ikhlas, it must be sincere. You can't do it to be labeled by other people a certain way, or to be praised, or to be liked. You must do it for the face of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one you do not see, but He is the one that created you and the only one who can grant you Jannah. There must be ikhlas, there must be sincerity. And the second condition is that your actions, they follow the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu <clears throat> On the authority of Amir al-Mu'mineen, Abu Hafs Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu qal, سَمِعْتُ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولُ إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَاتِ وَإِنَّمَا لِكُلِّ مْرِئِ مَا نَوَى فَإِنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَمَنْ كَانَتْ هِجْرَتُهُ لَدُنْيَ يُصِيبُهَا أَوْ إِمْرَأَةٍ يَنْكِهُهَا فَهِجْرَتُهُ إِلَى مَا هَاجَرَ عَلَيْهِ رَوَاهُ بُخَارِي وَمُسْلِمْ Prophet Muhammad sallallahu he was heard to have said that your actions are judged by your intentions. Give all your wealth. Fast every day. Pray 50 times a day. It means nothing if your intention isn't for the pleasure of your Lord. It's worth garbage if you're not doing it to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To seek His forgiveness and His mercy. Totally relying on His rahmah to get you into Jannah. The actions will be judged by their intentions and everyone will get what they intended. So the one who makes the migration for Allah and His Messenger Wasallam, then they will get written as they made that migration for Allah and His Messenger Wasallam. But the one who migrates or moves or does this so that they could, uh, so that they could uh, get some gain in this dunya or so that they could marry someone, then they will get what they intended. This is how they will be graded. It was said, عَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يَهْتَمْ دَائِمًا فِي نَفْسِهِ بِالتَّحْصِيرِ وَلَا يَرَى لَهَا فَضْلًا وَيَعْلَمْ أَنَّ الْفَضْلِ كُلُّهُ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ لَا اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَهَلَكَ قَالَ تَعَالَى وَلَوْ لَا فَضْلُ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ وَرَحْمَتُهُ مَا زَكَى مِنْكُمْ مِنْ أَحَدٍ أَبَدًا وَلَكِنَّ اللَّهَ يُزَكِّي مَنْ يَشَاءُ فَعَلَى الْإِنسَانِ أَنْ يُكْثُرْ مِنَ الْإِسْتِغْفَارِ بَعْدَ الْعَمَلِ a person should always think that they're falling short. You should never think you've done enough. You'd always think, you should always think that you have not done nearly enough. 
And you should not attribute any good deeds to yourself, nor pat yourself on the back, nor go to sleep rested thinking you've done so much good. And he should realize that all the blessings come from Allah. And were it not for Allah's blessings, then you would be doomed. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, what means, and if it was not for the favor of Allah upon you and His mercy, not one of you would have been pure ever. But Allah purifies whom He wills. He should pray a great deal, making forgiveness istighfar after doing the deed you do, even the good ones, because you fear, or this person that truly fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they make istighfar after they do the good deed because they still, after those good deeds, they still think they're short. As Sa'di rahimahullah, he said, every time a person finishes an act of worship, he should seek Allah's forgiveness. And we saw the Messenger of Allah sallallahu do this after every salah, after taslim, after saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. The first three words out of his mouth, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Why? For any taqseer, for any shortness in the prayer, any mind wandering in the prayer, any inattentiveness in the prayer. He should seek Allah's forgiveness for his shortcomings and thank Him for enabling to do the good deeds. He should not be like the one who thinks that he's perfected his acts of worship. You should not be like the one who thinks you've done a favor to Allah by praying. Because Allah doesn't need you. If all of us were not to pray, it does not diminish His dominion or His majesty or His kingship in one bit. Yet some of us think we do Allah a favor when we give in charity. We do Allah a favor when we pray. We do Allah a favor when we fast. You ain't doing Allah no favors, you're only doing yourself a favor by Allah's permission. And you should think, uh, and you, so he should not be like the one who thinks that he's perfected his acts of worship or done a favor to his Lord or think that it has given him a high status for such a person deserves to be rejected. This person deserves rejection if they feel along those ways. The fourth thing that can corrupt the heart the heart becomes corrupt by eating, by eating the sustenance of Allah without appreciating Him. And many of us, you finish, Alhamdulillah, you just say it really quickly, not realizing how valuable every piece of grain on your table was, every piece of fruit on your table is. You won't realize how every drop of water, how valuable it is, clean water, good water. The heart becomes corrupt when you eat that sustenance. You're eating the rizq of Allah without appreciating Him. While you're eating, you're backbiting. While you're eating, you're lying. While you're eating, you're planning and deceiving. Sin. While you're eating, you're arguing and fighting. This is all showing unappreciation for what Allah has blessed you with. Allah says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُلُوا مِنْ طَيِّبَاتِ مَا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ وَأَشْكُرُوا لِلَّهِ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبَدُونَ Allah says, what means, O oh, you who believe, you who believe in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, eat of the lawful things we've provided for you, and be grateful to Allah, if it is indeed He whom you worship. Doing ibadah is equivalent. It's been brought to the level of you thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If indeed Allah is the one you worship, then how can you not thank Him and give Him gratitude for all the sustenance He's blessed you with? ثُمَّ قَالْ وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّا وَلَقَدْ مَكَّنَّاكُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَجَعَلْنَا لَكُمْ فِيهَا مَعَايِشْ قَنِينًا مَا تَشْكُرُونَ Allah says what means and surely we gave you authority on the earth and appointed there in provisions for your life but little thanks do you give yet there are some who it's very hard for them to get that word up subhanallah to thank Allah they, they attribute everything on their table in their home on their bodies they attribute it to their own hard work. When it's really the grace, the mercy, the blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that got you that. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنِ اللَّهِ ثُمَّ إِذَا مَسَّكُمْ الدُّرُّ فَإِلَيْهِ تَجْأَرُونَ Allah says what means, and whatever of the blessings and good things you have, it is from Allah. Every bit of it, no matter how smart you are, no matter how hard you work, no matter how many hours you work, Everything is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Then when harm touches you unto him, you cry aloud for help. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, what can make the heart corrupt is that Allah has given you sustenance and you eat from it. But you do so without appreciating him. And that appreciation isn't just in a word, it's fearing him. It's praising him, it's thanking him, it's acknowledging him. And staying away from sin, especially when you're eating that sustenance. أقول قالي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ادعو الله يغفر لكم ذنوب إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونصلي ونسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا وبعد ما دي brothers and sisters in Islam over these past few weeks, we see the importance of the heart and what we need to get out of it so that we may be sound and what we may need to do so that we can have that sound heart, that piece of flesh that if it's sound, the rest of us will be sound, but if it's corrupt, the rest of us will be corrupt. al Hassan al-Basri, as we mentioned, he mentioned these points. And to continue those six points on the fifth point of what can corrupt the heart so that we stay away from it. وَلَا يَرْضَوْنَا the heart becomes corrupt when you're not pleased with Allah's decisions for you, His allocations for you, His qadr, His destiny. When you're not pleased with what Allah has given you, your heart will become corrupt. And this is very, very true without a doubt for anyone who wants to pay attention. We have a hadith in the Sunnah of the Tirmidhi where the Prophet ﷺ was asked by somebody, give me some things that I can do. Give me some statements so that I can act upon and teach it to somebody else. And one of those things, the Prophet ﷺ said, وَأَرْضَى بِمَا قَسَمَ اللَّهُ لَكْ تَقُنْ أَغْنَى النَّاسِ One of the advices he gave, that the Prophet ﷺ gave, he said, and be content with whatever Allah gave you, you'll be the richest of people. And we reviewed those hadith. How can someone who's poor be rich? How can someone who has nothing in terms of material be wealthy. When you're content in your heart, then even a morsel of rice feels like you have a 50 pound bag. When you're content with what Allah gave you, you're the richest of people. Because you're not looking for what others have, you've accepted what your Creator chose for me, for you. When you are content and pleased with what Allah wrote for you, you'll be the richest of people. Ubadah ibn Samit, he said to his son, Ya Bunayya, innaka lan tajid ta'ma haqiqat al-iman hatta ta'lam anna ma asabaka lam yakun liyukhti'aka wa ma akhta'aka lam yakun liyusibaka. Sami'atu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yakul inna awwala ma khalaq Allah al-qalam faqala lahu aktub faqala al-qalam ya Rabbi wa madha aktub قال أكتب مقادير كل شيء كل شيء حتى تقوم الساعة قال يا بني إني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من مات على غير هذا فليس منا فليس مني عفوا فليس مني this hadith which is صحيح من سنة أبي داود شيخ الباني هي أثنتك رحمه رحمه الله عبادة بن الصامت he said to his son son you will not taste the sweetness of faith. You will not taste the reality of faith until you know that what has come to you could never miss you. What has been given to you, no one could stop it from getting to you. And that what you missed could never come to you. What Allah did not write for you, even if the world came together, they could not give it to you. I heard the Messenger of Allah وسلم, saying that the first thing that was created was the pen. And Allah, He told the pen to write. And the pen said, Oh my Lord, what shall I write? And Allah told the pen, Write down everything that is going to happen until the end of time, until the last hour. This was before the creation of the heavens and the earth. This was before we were even close to coming into this world. Allah wrote down what's going to happen until the end of time. He said, Oh my son, I heard the Messenger of Allah saying, he who dies on something other than this, then he is not from me. Meaning, not from this ummah, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu 
Why? Just for being upon that principle that you think that you can get something that is in your control or something should have been avoided that it's in your control and you don't think that Allah is the one in control. This is enough to take you away from the Ummah of Muhammad in terms of your thinking. What is meant for you is no one can stop it. What is not meant for you, no one can give it to you. And if you die upon other than that, you may not be from the Ummah of Muhammad The heart becomes corrupt lastly through comes lastly through وَيَدْفُنُونَ مَوْتَاهُمْ وَلَا يَعْتَبِرُونَ It comes, becomes corrupt by burying your dead and not learning a lesson from that. And how many of us have been to those funerals? How many of us are seeing the body cloaked? It shouldn't be in a casket. If we want to go back to the sunnah, it should be on an open stretcher. So you can see a body wrapped up in sheets being carried to its grave, not even draped in the shahad or all these other rugs and stuff that we see people put on top of it. We're thinking we're honoring, we're losing the mindset, we're losing the, the, the lesson for the living when we do that. Because when that bare, bare body's being carried, the first thing on your mind should be the kefin that's on the next shelf, the kefin that's next up to be taken could have my name on it. And it could be the one that's wrapping me. And yet we see those already in a corner laughing, chuckling. In another corner planning a business uh, you know, uh, transaction. Others in the other corner with ayah al smoking. And you have a body being buried, taken to a grave to be buried. Abu Huraira, he mentioned that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, أَكْثِرُوا ذِكْرَ هَذْ مِنْ لِذَّاتِ يَعْنِ الْمَوْتِ The Prophet وسلم, he said, frequently remember the destroyer of pleasures. He means by that, he meant by that death. Because you can be happy. Everything can be going your way. And in an instant you're dead. And now the life in, your, in the barzakh begins for you. And it may not be one of happiness. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةَ الْمَوْتِ وَإِنَّمَا تَوَفَّوْنَ أُجُورُكُمْ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ فَمَنْ زُحْزِحَ عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدُخِلَ الْجَنَّةِ فَقَدْ فَازْ وَمَا الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعٌ غُرُورٌ The Prophet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said what means every soul will taste death. Ain't no running away from it. You know it's coming. The ones who die are a reminder that this could be you. Young or old, healthy or sick, strong or weak, smart or dumb, handsome or ugly, it doesn't matter. When it's going to come, it's going to come. Every soul will taste death. And only on the day of resurrection will you pay, be paid your wages in full. Whoever is removed from the fire and admitted to paradise, this is the successful one. This is the one who can brag. This is the one who will have true honor. The life of this world is only an enjoyment of deception. It's a deceiving thing to deceive us. And shaitan, he's the chief enemy, the head enemy, trying to get us to love this life more than the next life. Trying to put us in darkness instead of light. Shaddad ibn Aus, radiallahu anhu, he said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, Al kayis man dana nafsahu wa amala nima ba'd al mawt, wal aajiz man atba'a nafsahu hawaha, thumma tamanna ala Allah. This hadith, which is Hassan in the Sunnah of Tirmidhi, the Prophet وسلم, said, A wise man is the one who calls himself to account and refrains from doing evil deeds, and does good deeds, good noble deeds, to benefit him after death. You're not looking for the payback in this dunya, you're looking for it in the next life. This is the wise person. This is the one who has brains, common sense, everything all together. But the foolish person, the dumb person, is the one who subdues himself to his temptations, and to his desires, and he seeks from Allah not to get away from his desires, not for Allah to save him from those desires and get him into his obedience. He seeks from Allah the fulfillment of his desires. This is the true foolish ones. And you see so many people when they're in the midst of their desires or their lusts or their whims, seeking from Allah to let them get what they're desiring, what they're lusting, what they're having a whim for. But the wise one always is looking for their reward, always doing for something that they'll get paid back for later. How much, however much happiness one obtains in life, it only lasts for a short time. 
Death will spare no one. When it comes, you're wealthy or poor. You're strong or weak. It will come for you. Some die walking. Some die while traveling in airplanes or in cars. Some die in their bed. Some die in their sleep. No health conditions or with health conditions. And we have this death in front of our eyes daily. We see, may Allah aid them, our brothers and sisters in Pakistan, being on, on a rope, a bed frame, just to slide them down to another side so they don't drown. We mention it commonly, we're seeing death in front of our own eyes. In all of the Muslim lands, and we go to the, 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 the graveyards in Lodi, in Livermore, wherever else it may be, we see ourselves burying someone who was once alive, burying someone who was once happy, laughing, breathing, walking, talking, and then no more. This is one of those things that can corrupt the heart, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Allah said, وَمَنْ حَيَاتِ الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا لَعِبٌ وَلَهُ وَلَلْدَّارُ الْآخِرَةُ خَيْنٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَتَّقُونَ أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Allah says what means, and the life of this world is nothing but play and enjoyment. Play and amusement. You can do what is halal, there's a lot of it. But be mindful of how you live it. But far better is the house and the hereafter for those who are the muttaqoon, who are pious and righteous. Will you then not understand this? So my dear brothers and sisters in Islam, we saw in review that Al-Hasan al-Basri, he mentioned, rahimahullah, the heart becomes corrupt through six means. When you commit a sin in hope of repenting, you're committing the sin knowing oh, I'll just make tawbah for it. And there's no eagerness to make that tawbah. By seeking knowledge and not applying it, by practicing, doing good deeds, doing deeds without sincerity, you're not really doing them for Allah. By eating the sustenance of Allah without appreciating Him. By not being pleased with what Allah has destined for you and allocated for you in this life, and by burying the dead but not learning from them. These are the things that can corrupt the heart. We pray to Allah Almighty that He makes our hearts sound and not corrupt, and leads us to obedience and light instead of disobedience, misguidance, and darkness. Allahumma khalil muslimina wal muslimat, wal mu'minina wal mu'minat, ahiyai minhum wal amwad, innaka alta samiyan qalibun mujibu al-da'awad, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik, ya muqallib al-qulub thabit qulubun ala deenik, rabbana la tuzik qulubana ba'd ith hadaytana, wa hab lana min ladunka rahma, innaka alta al-wahhab, subhana rabbika rabbil ujjati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين